this is summer near Washington, D.C., where Athletes Unlimited has left lacrosse fans shouting in amazement. Lightning quick restart. Kent feeds it inside. Sammy Joe Tracy. Whoa! Behind the back, shovel shot to the top corner. Last week was an elite level demonstration in how the sport should be played. It delivered up tempo excitement and absolutely riveting conclusions. Dempsey Arsenault is at the top of the leaderboard, exchanging jersey colors with Kayla Wood, while Taylor Cummings and Katie Glynn enjoy being captain for the first time. The difference between winning and losing is razor thin. I'm just gonna say nothing's as cool as freaking winning. You guys are like, oh, let's have fun, let's have fun. I literally can't have fun if I'm not winning. And that's reason to celebrate with Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports is presented by GEICO. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. Captain's Log, Saturday, August 14th. This parade of lacrosse stars goes trekking through week four with Team Dempsey Arsenal straight up against the squad led by Katie Glynn. We've got the best in the biz on display. 58 of the most highly decorated players in the galaxy. Their names found on different rosters weekly thanks to a captain's draft. The scoreboard watching is amazing. Points add up in unique ways and we crown one champion next weekend. A very pleasant welcome to you alongside Courtney Martinez, Connor, a five-time national champion at Maryland. I'm Joe Beninati. Court, earlier in the week, the players took an extra day off. Yesterday, the games were postponed due to huge thunderstorms. How might it affect the play? You know, affect their play in a good way. Another day off means another day of rest for their bodies. These players have been going hard for four weeks in a row, practicing playing several games each and every weekend. So the fact that they had an additional day off in last night is going to be beneficial to them. If you ask the players, they'll tell you that injuries are just part of the game and that bouncing back from them isn't easy. But Amanda Johansson looked steady and sharp in her return last weekend. Amanda Johansson, she's done such a great job since she's been back. She has great size and speed. She can take shots from downtown, but she's shifty and she can create with dodges like this, splitting players from left to right. So I don't think that ankle's hurting her at all. All the players were thrilled to have the former facilitator back on the field when she's right there, number seven. She is very, very visible. You and I have had a lot of fun, Courtney, describing the play of these graced athletes on the field. We missed seeing Kayla Trainer last week, and I have a feeling that she is going to kick it up a notch or two today. The fact that she missed last week yet was still picked in the number one spot for the draft. Kayla Trainer, she's a force not just on the offensive end of the field, but at the draw control as well. She's crafty. All eyes are on her defensively. Usually she can dish that ball out, but she has the ability to shake and break through an entire defense. Even with the absence, she is still in striking distance on the leaderboard, and we know that she can go on huge point total runs. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, it works through a unique scoring system court. Players will rack up those individual stat points, as you can tell with trainer. But the model is really driven by collecting win points with your teammates week to week. It's definitely about being a team player. The more that your team wins quarter to quarter, that's 20 points. The entire game overall win is 45 points. So the more your team wins, the more opportunity you have to earn points. There's three game MVPs decided after each game. Three different players. It could be from any team, not just the winning team. So it's important to produce and then individual stat points. The more you do, the more you score. This is week four of five on the regular season for Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Everybody's now really focused on that Geico leaderboard. Dempsey Arsenal sets the pace just over 1,130 points. Dempsey is going to be out this weekend with an undisclosed medical condition. She is on the sideline. She will be there to help lead and cheer on her mates, but she will not be playing today as the team dressed in gold works without number 11, the high scoring and highly rated Dempsey Arsenal. As far as the goaltenders are concerned, Courtney, we thought that uh, through three weeks of play, they've been excellent. The save percentage numbers aren't specifically eye-popping, but these 
players are making big saves at the right time, and that definitely includes a former captain in Britt Reed. Britt Reed's done an outstanding job. She's such a communicator. She really gets her team excited. She's been at the top of the leaderboard previously in that top five ranking. It's all about producing as a team yet again, and then individually making some saves, getting some ground balls or draw con or cause turnovers as a goalkeeper. From cage to cage, Britt Reed at one end, Mira Shane at the other. Michigan Wolverine class of 2019 who hails from Princeton, New Jersey. She says she plays for the others around her. Today, she'll be playing on the team dressed in purple, captained by her goalie partner, Katie Glenn. Interestingly enough, you're the captain and you don't start yourself. All right, that's an interesting strategy. We'll see how it plays out. McCone and Taylor Vanthoff get to the draw as we get you set to go. Nice to have you on board. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports, presented by GEICO. For bundling made easy, go to GEICO.com. Off the ground, the first scoop for Taylor Van Thoff, the first offensive touch for Kristen Carr and the team dressed in purple. Six on six at this end and working quickly. Trainer steps to the inside. She'll find Fortunato. There's a 60-second shot clock in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. There's an eight-meter key, score from beyond it. You'll get two points. Kennedy slashing in, scores! Allie Kennedy wastes no time. Allie Kennedy, she has the ability not just to have a quick release on her shot, but to get to Cage. We saw her slicing and dicing through defensive players. But ultimately, it all happened due to team play, winning that draw control safely getting it into the offensive player's hands. And right there, you saw her take her defender to the right initially before she cut back, pulled to the inside. Again, it's all about creating space offensively. So we see that little stutter, the jabs left and right. You want to get your defensive player on their heels, and that's exactly what she did while she had incredible control and protection. Incredible there to see on that super slow-mo the way she maintained possession of the ball in her cross. Kennedy has goals in five straight. That's 13 overall on the year. For every goal you score individually in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, they give you 12 to your leaderboard total. All it took was 26 seconds for Kennedy to get Team Glynn on the board. Draw control this time around. McGlone overruns it. Still coming up with it. It's uh, Taylor Vanthoff streaking towards the cage. A second consecutive possession for the team dressed in purple. Joe, we see her running out of frame right now. She's switching to her offensive stick. She does use a draw stick. It helps enable her to put the ball into different positions. It's about quickness and skill, but sometimes it's also about the stick and the stringing that goes along with it. Fortunato fires, and that's stopped by Britt Reed. Courtney Fortunato, who has tallies in eight of the nine games she's played in this summer of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Glenn's outlet is taken off the turf on the run by Molly Garrett. Sammy Joe Tracy off the split dodge will set up the first six on six setup for Team Arsenal playing without its injured captain today. And that is expected to carry through the weekend festivities. Kenzie Kent lobs it over the top off of a magical weekend last weekend for 10 in the gold. This is Amanda Johansson sharing the ball for Izzy McMahon. Shot clock is at 20. Hedging out there defensively, Kennedy for Team Glynn. Swing it back on around. Six on six. McMahon on the hop, inside 10 seconds to shoot. Good pressure coming from Taylor Vanthoff, four seconds to shoot. That pass was a tough catch for Kent. It's taken back by the speedster. Kennedy runs, she's got a four on three fast break. Kennedy on the push, Kayla Trainer next. Big face dodge. Kick save, it was dynamite there from Reed. She robbed Trainer. From excellent defense on the opposite end of the field all the way to a save by Britt Reed. We talk a lot about offensively what they're able to do, but the defense that we have seen in Athletes Unlimited has been stellar. Their sticks are up, they're causing plays to happen. They're taking control, they're not sitting back but they're pressuring the offense. That was one of the best saves we have seen in now four weeks of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Kenzie Kent on the sneak, shovels it to McCone. She'll keep the ball hot. Sammy Joe Tracy on the inside roll, missed the target. 
Closest to the ball where and when it leaves the playing surface gets possession. Keep it for the gold. Another whistling drive for McMahon that sails high and wide. Great action in the first three minutes. McCone, quick feed inside. That was a tough catch. She crossed up Amanda, Amanda Johansson and Mira Shane will pounce down on the ball in the goal circle. An outlet pass that was deflected, taken to safety by O'Donnell. Still not a clean clear though for Kristen Carr. Carr comes up with the scoop. Another strong ride, another forced turnover and a push will give possession to Team Arsenault. Just joining us, a one nothing advantage. Ali Kennedy on the board. We've had great action at both ends. If we look at the difference between Athletes Unlimited and NCAA lacrosse, it's faster. Faster, more physical, the referees allow for more play, more contact to occur. That's all a part of the rules. But that 60 second shot clock means that players are running and gunning using their speed and athleticism. The goals are closer together. All of this creates for a better offensive show. 80 yards from cage to cage. Johansson fakes the two point shot. McMahon drifting back behind the goal matched up with Little. On the flip, here's Kenzie Kent, two sport athlete at Boston College. Quick stick, score! Kenzie Kent. Tremendous ball movement offensively for Team Arsenal. A dozen now for Kenzie. She's been leading the entire league in assists. This time she calls her own number. Walking to the surface and getting right to business with Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Back on Monday, four captains going through 14 rounds of draft business. Kayla Wood, very familiar to wearing the captain's crown. She's wearing orange this week. Katie Glynn, a first time captain. Same for Taylor Cummings. Cummings, who leads all Athletes Unlimited players in individual stat points. Courtney, uh, you'll get to experience the draft for real with me on Monday. And we think back to it, just some, some bullet points. And Kaylee Waters, you can tell at the bottom of the screen, is usually the first uh, keeper taken. You know, there's some things that don't quite ever change. Kayla Trainer, Kenzie Kent, Sam Apuzo, all of them leading generally in the picks in the draft, not surprised. You want players who can dominate on the field, and those three have certainly shown and proven over the past weeks that they can produce. Taylor Vanthoff ready to draw with uh, Lindsay McCone. And Courtney, you've been mentioning, and I think we've been showing from time to time, she uses a different lacrosse stick head to draw, and then she'll sub out for an offensive stick that she's more comfortable with. That's right. Some draw heads just match up better against another head. And if a player chooses not to use a draw specific head that, you know, ideally the ball kind of cups into the frame a little bit better on the draw head. You see that yellow head right there that she's using. And she chooses to sub that out because it's a little bit more difficult to play with, but more helpful at the draw. Possession awarded to Carr. Cookie's going to the cage pretty quick. Kayla Trainer. Missed last weekend, tending to a personal family matter. So I'm sure she uh, would have fresh legs for the weekend of play and be looking to get herself back into a sports mindset. Shayna Parekh is a two point threat. So is Taylor Vantha for that matter. She can shoot darts from behind that eight meter key. We're halfway through the 60 second shot clock. We're more than halfway through the opening quarter. Off the roll back, Kayla Trainer with those ever-present pump fakes. Finds Corchinato, nice split dodge, but she ran out of real estate. O'Donnell on the feed. That's over top of Ali Kennedy. Just 13 seconds to shoot now for Kayla Trainer, recently named the head coach of the Syracuse women's program. Trainer off the split dodge, loves to come back left. She fires and scores! Kayla Trainer. Would you believe me if I told you she is not a natural lefty? Despite loving the left-hand side of the field, her dominant hand is her right hand. 
However, we see her split to her right, setting up her defensive player. She can even shoot that shot low goal line extended. Her ability to reach around the defensive player, which is what we see right there, is what makes it hard for the goalkeeper to make that save. She's not expecting that shot. However, the clock was winding down. Super smart decision by Kayla Trainer. They cleared space for her as well. The ball's in her stick. You want to get out of her way. You could see Caroline Wakefield pop up her right hand in amazement and go, how in the world did she do that? I was in great defensive position. <laughs> Caroline, you were, but that's Kayla Trainer, And she is at times of another world. The number one draft pick this week in her return to play. Sam Apuzo had been that in each of the previous two weeks. Off this draw, Johansson comes a run, a nice kick to Kent. Score! Ideally in your lacrosse, when one team makes the goal, you want to make sure to answer back. And that's certainly what we're seeing so far here in the first quarter. Amanda Johansson, such an a incredible player, but unselfish. And at a time when points matter, sure, it, 12 points look good for a goal, but she knew one extra pass was going to catch that defensive player off guard. We see her coming in with speed. As soon as she hits Kenzie Kent, that sli slide went upfield to her. Kenzie Kent wide open, so why not make one extra pass? Kent on the business end of that break for her second goal on the day. Each goal gets you 12 points for your individual leaderboard. And even if we slow it down, it's too quick for Mira Shane. <laughs> that stick fake looked like it was actual speed. Kenzie's so crafty with her stick, can use her wrist strength incredibly well. Folks, we want to get you even closer to the game. Join the Unlimited Club for free by downloading the Athletes Unlimited app today. You'll receive all the latest news and updates in the palm of your hand. Stream digital games, unlock special access, and more. If you're looking for more than that, upgrade your membership for a whole year. Behind the scenes access, all the Athletes Unlimited seasons. You join the players in voting for the game. MVPs and the end of season awards. Visit AUProsports.com. That's AUProsports.com to learn more about the Unlimited Club and make your Geico Unlimited pick. Today we are playing in front of friends and family and special guests and fans today. Today is one of those days when the fans can join us. We say thanks to our presenting field partners, the good people at Geico, for their support. We say a lot of thanks, Court, when you think about the kinds of storms that rolled through here just about 24 hours ago. Matt Lieber and the entire facility team here at the Maryland Soccer Plex, Caitlin Jackson, her crew, Mia Borelli of Athletes Unlimited, the entire operations crew, John Spade on the technology side, and then we have to thank all the techs uh, in our TV crew. This compound was uh, laid waste yesterday by the high winds, the thunderstorms that ripped through here. And remarkably, when you look around, you wouldn't even know the difference. And we're glad to be back on the air with you. We're wondering whether or not uh, how they'll fit in yesterday's games. We're awaiting words as to when they will be played. This is the game within the game. These players are on the field. Dempsey Arsenal technically is not, but she is uh, on the sideline as everybody is trying to scratch and claw to the top of the overall leaderboard. Dempsey, that number one spot, how long will she be able to hold it without uh, picking up any individual stat points this weekend? That is a key question. Joe and Courtney with it, 2.48 to go in this uh, opening quarter on FS1. Another hot day, temperatures are in the mid 80s, it's humid. Par for the course though in the mid-Atlantic region around uh, this time of year. And we are some 30 miles north of Washington, D.C. Watching Grace Gabriel go to work with Allie Kennedy, Taylor Van Thoff around the horn to the high scoring Courtney Fortunato. Courtney had a five goal game against Team Wood last weekend. One of just four of those on the entire summer. Shayna Pereka leads the league in two point goals. Tiptoeing around that eight meter key. Pereka rolling back. Good defense right there in her grill from Katie Hirsch. Face dot score! Beautiful moves. Grace Gabriel strikes again. Grace Gabriel, number 48 for Team Glenn. She's such a quick offensive player. As a midi, you're going to see her all over the field. But offensively, 
As soon as she gets the ball, we're going to see her set up that defensive player with her left hand, taking her away from the goal, creating more of a lane. Right here in slow motion, we see her move to the left, a quick change of direction. And that's where she's so deadly. As soon as she changes directions, she immediately has that stick up and ready to go in a perfect lane to the cage, ready to take that shot before any defensive players can slide. The two-time Big East Midfielder of the Year during her college days at Marquette, Grace Gabriel has uh, tallies in three of her last five outings. She's given Team Glenn the lead 3-2. Two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Every quarter is worth 20 points. So if you win the frame, everybody on your side gets 20 points. If the quarter is tied, we'll carry it over. The second quarter would be worth 40. At the end of the game, you're victorious. You and your mates get 45 points. Off this draw, scraped high in the air. The whistles blare out. Liz Brush is our head official today. Sammy Joe Tracy bluffing that shot, finds Amanda Johansson with help from Molly Garrett. Still six on six. We haven't had any cards today, any player up situations. Split dodge for Garrett to the elbow. Matched there by Allie Kennedy. McMahon ready to go, getting downhill on Gabriel. Off the flip to McCone. Snappy pass looking for Kent. That was blocked. Taken off the grass by Taylor Vantha. Defensively, we see a zone by Team Glenn that's catching Team Arsenal and Gold off guard. Amber McKenzie barking out defensive signals. Number one in the gold. Trainer fires. That's stopped by Britt Reed. She couldn't find the rebound. Good news, though, is Caroline Wakefield was right there to bring it back across the mid-stripe. Wakefield, who has a goal this summer, she scored against Kayla Trainer's team back in week two. Under a minute to play, just about a 10-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Tough catch there for Kenzie Kent, matched up with Little, the former Denver Pioneer captain. That pass is going to go awry, could be over and back. Kayla Trainer absorbs it at the midline, and she's ready to work. Kayla Trainer off the double split dodge, rolls in, flips for Fortunato. Shot clock's turned off. The team in purple can have the last possession. They have the lead in the quarter. Kennedy stonewalled by Reed. Ball down, Trainer has it. 20 points on the line for Team Glenn and Team Arsenal. Kayla Trainer is in no hurry now. 14 seconds left as she checks the scoreboard. Very smart. She wants to make sure her team is coming up with this quarter one point, which is worth 20 points. Make sure you take that last shot. Here it comes from Kennedy, forced over top of the goal by Reed as the horn blares out. Eight minutes complete. Team Glenn sticks three past Britt Reed. Allie Kennedy able to get the party started. Sun baking down on lacrosse fans here at the Maureen Hendricks Field, Maryland Soccerplex, where Team Glenn has a 3-2 advantage after eight minutes over Team Arsenal. Folks, our players have been asked to talk about self-belief, a time of reflection and how it affected their career. Listen in to Izzy McMahon. 
I went through a, a good amount um, at, at SC. Um, at one point I was, I was actually ineligible um, throughout the fall season. So for me, I think that was the hardest part of my, my college career because it was a time, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't blame anybody else but, but myself. So what I just had to do is I just had to look in the mirror, um, you know, give myself a little punch on the chin and say like, hey, stand up, let's go and get back into it. And I ended up having a great fall, did what I had to do to get back and spring came around and I was ready to go at that time. So definitely, definitely a big hump, a tough one, but going over that I think was, I, I was able to find a lot about myself during that time. Izzy wore number two at Army. She wore 22 with the women of Troy. That was Believe You Will, presented by Guaranteed Rate. Courtney, she played for a bunch of different coaches at SC, didn't she? She did. I had the opportunity to coach against her, and I tell you, she was somebody that we matched up on because she's so quick and shifty all over the field. Fans, it's time for you to earn some points today. Thanks for watching today's telecast. Take out your phone and enter the code on the screen that you're about to see into your Athletes Unlimited app. You'll get points for yourself. Don't have the Athletes Unlimited app? Head over to the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. Start earning the points to unlock exclusive rewards and stay in the know about all things Athletes Unlimited. Kenzie Kent, as usual, has been lurking around the net and paying dividends today, Courtney. It's no surprise that she has two goals so far. As we look at the ball movement, she gives the ball up, cuts immediately, asking for it back. When an opposing team is playing a zone, you want to move the ball quickly, you want to cut, and right off the draw, they're able to draw that slide, which opens up Kenzie down low. Again, different looks offensively that we're going to see. A lot of quick movement of the ball, a lot of give and go type actions and cutting. And then that will prove for Team Arsenal wearing gold to be fruitful offensively. Otherwise, if they have the ball stick in any one player's stick, it's going to be tough for them to score. Zones eat that up. Big points for Kenzie in the last four games you were just seeing. And overall on the leaderboard, Let's have a peek where things stand up to the moment. Dempsey Arsenault out of play this weekend due to an undisclosed medical condition, but she has the lead. Kayla Wood will play in the second game today. Dempsey Arsenault, obviously she leads in the leaderboard. She can still earn points with her team winning quarter, quarters as well as an overall game. However, I don't expect for her to stay there. We have Kayla Wood, who previously led for the initial weeks. She's a defensive player. I love that we have a goalkeeper at third and then a midfielder at fourth. You can be at the top of the leaderboard in any position. This proves that, but your team needs to win. You need to produce statistically on the field. And then obviously MVP points are a huge bonus. Kayla Trainer and her side, Team Glynn, picked up the 20 quarter points in the opening frame as uh, Grace Gabriel's marker late in that quarter gave them the 3-2 quarter victory. We're just about to, on time to start the second frame. We mentioned Dempsey Arsenal. She's on the sideline in the white t-shirt, the Love is Unlimited t-shirt during Pride Week, Pride Night, celebrated in our nightcap game today. A game that we anticipate to be starting around 2.15. There's Dempsey and another injured player, Hallie Majorana. We anticipate game two today around 2.15 p.m. on the digital platforms for Athletes Unlimited. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. Lights have been on. Skies are overcast. It is a breezy day. Temps in the mid 80s. With Washington, D.C. about 30 miles to our south. Team Glenn is in the purple. Team Arsenal being down two players, that's certainly going to be tougher for those on the field, especially the midfielders having one less midi out there. They're going to need to slow the pace of game, use the clock to their advantage. Seeing Maddie Hall for the first time, 57 in the gold. She's the player that was added to Athletes Unlimited roster when we found out that Dempsey Arsenal was not available. Fortunato shoots around her defender and just missed that one. Kayla Trainer works in, hesitates, big face dodge, sent that one wide of the goal, backed up by Taylor Hench, former two-time national champion at Maryland. She's earned more playing time with Majorana's injury. There's Pareka's patented two-point shot. 
stopped there by Britt Reed. Every save for the goalie earns Britt six points on her leaderboard tally, and she's been right there flirting with the top five all season. Britt's already up to a half a dozen stops today. She's certainly seeing the ball well from her cage. It's very important goalkeeper-wise to not just be communicating, but be a defensive stalwart. And we've seen tremendous saves at both ends of the field. But again, it's the defense. They're knocking passes down. They're forcing shots from low angles. Defense is certainly all over the offensive players on both ends of the field. O'Donnell for Kennedy, Pareka for Hench. Six on six with just over six minutes to go in this opening half. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports presented by Geico. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Fortunato, who will make it look easy from time to time with her incredible shot. Quick stick, Kennedy stopped there once more by Britt Reed. Reed, who had a 10 save game last weekend. She's had two double figure save games this summer. O'Donnell had a two goal game. She'll backpedal out, slow it down as they have the fresh 60 second shot clock. Kayla Trainer on the hop. Working in against Johansson. Johansson, who stands around 5'11", cuts her off. Trainer bounced it wide. It's backed up on the sideline, however, by Allie Kennedy. That shot that Kayla Trainer just took, wearing number 27 in purple. That's one, 21, excuse me. That's one of her signature moves, that low angle shot. Many don't understand how she can get it in, but she really reaches with her stick. How about Fortunato with a sidewinder to the top corner? Courtney Fortunato, she's such a threat offensively. She loves to dodge from the top, and we can see that right here. She can also feed off of her teammates, flipping her the ball. But right now, we see time, room, and space. Those quick stutters to the outside, creating an open lane to goal. Courtney Fortunato, the last person and only person to score so far in the second quarter. It's 4-2 for Team Glynn. Athlete causes allow the athletes to play their season in part for the benefit of the nonprofit organization of their choice. Let's hear from Amber McKenzie. Hi, I'm Amber McKenzie and I am playing for the Arc of Carroll County. The Arc of Carroll County is a center where um, people with intellectual and developmental disabilities um, go to either um, work, do crafts, work out, or you know, help they help them have a fulfilling life. The reason I chose the Arc and why I'm so passionate about it is because my Aunt Pippi has been a member of the Arc for as long as I can remember, and she calls it going to work every day, um, but it's a place that she feels very much at home where um, the other people look and act and um, 
are, and are just like her. And I feel like it's a, definitely a place that has impacted her life. And I know that I want to give the same impact back to the ARC if I can. Amber McKenzie and her mates doing their best to be civic leaders. Uh, the Give Lively Foundation makes a grant equal to 50% of the athletes end of season bonus to their nonprofit partner. Amber was a whale of a defender during her, or her collegiate days, I should say, at North Carolina. In addition to being a major part of the U.S. women, women winning two World Cup medals, she's a world champion, and she's just a great teammate. When we talk about the causes, that's one thing. Every single player in Athletes Unlimited, they said it was a huge draw for them. They love being able to play for something bigger than themselves in addition to their team. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, it's the only league driven entirely by the athletes. And we have four minutes and 50 seconds to go in our opening half of play. McMahon turns the corner, gets inside, then she gets de-sticked on a check that came inside that uh, eight meter key. So we're gonna see an eight meter. These are only taken from the center hash, despite the fact that she got fouled down low. Izzy's going to take this from the center hash defense on either sides. We've seen some two point wind ups. And it looks like that's what she's about to try. Shooting against Mira Shane. Fires and scores. That's a one. McMahon definitely had a foot inside the eight meter key, but it was a bullet. Izzy McMahon, we talked about her shiftiness and quickness offensively. But she is a power shooter. We see as she's coming up that left side of the goal cage, that swing right there is what earned her an eight meter free position. And that little crow hop, while it was a strong shot, she maybe would have started that a step outside. It could have been a two pointer, but certainly stepping inside or even on the line does not earn you a two pointer, but power nonetheless. She really wound up, get, got her hands up and away from her body to generate some strength for that quick goal. Last weekend was the first time that Izzy had been blanked. No goals in the three games last weekend. That won't happen this time around. As she scores there on the free position, makes this a one point game. This second quarter tied up at one apiece. Remember, there are 20 points available for everybody on the winning team per quarter. 45 when your team wins the game. Hench jogging in six on six. She's looking for Grace Gabriel. Team Glynn under Katie's direction. Katie is the backup goalie right now. She's the closer. She'll come on in the second half almost for certain. Gabriel dancing inside the eight meter key on the flip for Hench. One more time, Pareka sails it right on, but there's Britt Reed with another save. Defensively, Team Arsenal in their man-to-man -man defense they're so effective right now because they're just playing straight up, moving their feet, sitting nice and low, but they're hedging. They're showing that they're ready to slide to that adjacent player, which is causing difficulties offensively for Team Glenn. Maddie Hall picks this one up. Maddie played collegiately at Florida. She shares the rock with Johansson. Garrett gets to the alley off of a Sammy Joe Tracy screen. 24 seconds to shoot. McMahon hesitates. Crossing over, Garrett did not fire away. Kent moves it quickly behind the back. Sammy Joe Tracy, and that's a great stop from Mira Shane. How in the world she found that, I'll never know. Think offensively, that movement that we just saw is the key into beating that zone defense. We see as the ball is moving around quickly, Sammy Joe with the quick release behind the back, but that save, save by Mira Shane. Wearing number 33 in goal, her all eyes were on Sammy Joe. Sammy Joe is known for shooting the ball between the legs, behind the back, so she was ready for anything. That was an amazing reactionary save from Mira Shane. Trainer moves it quickly. Pareka fires. That's crossing over again. Britt Reed got a little chunk. They'll restart it with Fortunato. The officials did not see Reed get a piece of that, so the shot clock stays there. She definitely took that one right in the chest protector. Britt Reed's been fabulous in this first half, despite her mates trailing by one point. Without her, it's a four or five point deficit. Garrett jogs ahead. On the split. Just over two minutes with which to work in the opening half. Fast moving here at Maureen Hendricks Field. 
Kenzie Kent with a couple of goals in the opening frame. Around the screen set by McCone. Kent turns. Shane straightens up and stuffed her. Mira Shane getting into it. Matching Britt Reed save for save. What we've seen at both ends of the field defensively stellar from the defense, but the goalkeepers making point blank saves. We see trailing defense slide coming a little bit late, but Mira Shane's eyes were all over that one. As Kennedy zips one high, halfway through the shot clock, just about 90 seconds left in the half. As we hear the timeout, Kayla Trainer can catch her breath. A 4-3 score. Teams have traded markers in this second quarter alone. Britt Reed has been laser locked on that ball. Folks, you can own a piece of the Athletes Unlimited history with the first ever top trading card set for professional women's lacrosse. The limited edition sets feature all the athletes, plus additional cards about the league and randomly inserted serial numbered parallels, including player autographs and Nike golden tickets. These sets are available to purchase now through August 27th at tops.com. That's T O P P S dot com. It's the only opportunity to purchase this unique collectible. Get yours today. 4 3 score. Sun splash day. Yeah, you need the fan as the temperatures are hovering near 90. Folks, when you join these people in person here at Maureen Hendricks Field, you can get an exclusive NFT. It's a free Athletes Unlimited digital collectible. All you have to do is be here in person and scan the QR code. We'll roll out a new limited edition NFT each fan game this season, so get your tickets and start collecting today. One more of those to come next weekend. That'll be the final weekend court where we crown a champion. Britt Reed has been in the sunshine today and performing very, very well. As we see Britt Reed, what you want to see out of your keeper in cage is making saves. That's their first job. However, defensively, you want to know that you are leading from her. She's the quarterback, and that's what we're seeing right now. When she's playing well, it gives confidence to everyone around her. But she's playing incredibly big, right? She's taking up a lot of space. She's making sure that her angles are all on par. And when she's doing well, it feeds the rest of the defense. We've had a lot of chance to talk to Britt, and she says she's trying to be less jumpy. She's trying to hold her ground more. And boy, she has done it successfully so far today. Well-deserved encouragement there. It's 4-3 for Team Glenn in the purple. As far as the game inside of the game, the leaderboard reflecting what's happened in this first half so far. Dempsey Arsenault not able to add to her individual stat totals. She's out with an undisclosed injury. Katie Glynn in third. Britt Reed climbing up to sixth overall. Look at Fortunato, slow and steady now in among the top eight. You know, I expect for both keepers to continuously keep moving up those individual stat points whenever they make a save. It is six points, and we've seen a bunch of saves on both ends of the field. First quarter obviously went to Team Glynn. Second quarter is tied at 1-1. These are all unique things about Athletes Unlimited win the quarter. The leaderboard can really slide in a hurry. For example, Sam Apuzo, who we'll see in the second game, she improved 16 spots just by last weekend alone. You have that kind of a move at the right time, you could wind up winning it all. You could definitely be among the medalists among the top four by next weekend. And the lone reason why she hasn't been in the top previously in weeks one and two statistically she was earning a lot of points however she wasn't on a winning team and her that one, matters her one loss record was 0 and six and then she picked up two wins out of three add in your own stat points and zoom there you go start climbing kayla trainer knows all about that she was on a an extremely successful side in week one shot clock at 30 trainer turns goes behind the back and hit the post the long rebound out towards midfield. Shayna Pereka in a duel with Hirsch. Helping there on the ground ball. Looking for the scoop. It's Molly Garrett to the sideline. Time ticking. 1.15 to go in the opening half. Possession for Team Glynn in the purple. O'Donnell moves it quickly for Fortunato. She'll chill out. They have a new 60-second shot clock. They can milk most of this time. 
prior to the end of that second quarter, hoping to get a last shot. 1-1 one, one score in this quarter. 20 points on the line if you win it. Top of the screen backs me up. Taylor Vanthoff off the split, closing in. Nice pass, tried to go back door for Trainer, but she didn't make the catch. It's clearing time for Reed. Shot clock's turned off, 40 seconds in this opening half. We play eight minute quarters in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. This is week four of five, technically game 19 of 30. Two games postponed yesterday as the newcomer Maddie Hall takes it for a ride. Three times a Big East all academic at Florida. Shane makes another incredible save. She juggles that down to the circle. Nine seconds for Carr and Geiger. Katrina Geiger looking ahead, finds her defense partner Little. The long stretch inside the trainer. She fires over the top, another crossbar! Kayla, trainer, all sorts of frustrated. She hit the post twice in the last 90 seconds. Joe, what I love about Kayla, trainer, She's a competitor, right? We see her upset with herself that she hasn't been able to finish on these shots. But one great save at the end of the field and a quick transition to the opposite end. Another nice save right here by Mira Shane. Collapsing on that ball, but that's what I'm talking about. Kayla Trainer, one last ditch effort to get that quarter point. However, with things tied at 1-1, it's going to push to the third quarter, which means both teams are gonna come out firing. Well played, low scoring opening quarter. 4-3 for Team Glenn, tearing it up. Four different goal scorers for Team Glynn. They have the one-point advantage over Team Arsenal. We played 16 minutes today at Maureen Hendricks Field. Referencing back to the college days, right? The fields of Athletes Unlimited, they're full of Wolverines and Nittany Lions and Gators and Terrapins and Wildcats. So with that in mind, we asked the players to name the toughest animal. The toughest animal, toughest ever. An elephant. Um, I'm a big fan of elephants, but I also think that but I've seen videos of them trying to get taken down by, you know, a ton of what people would consider like the, the biggest threat animals, like lions, tigers, everything like that. And they kind of hold their ground and do whatever they can to protect their families. I feel like they're very family based and kind of reminds me of like mothers and people. And um, so I would consider them the toughest animal. I mean, come on, man. It's got to be a wolverine. You're asking a freaking Michigan Wolverine. It is that ferocious, intense, absolutely animalistic in all the ways. Sneaks up on you, boom. Some people don't even know what a Wolverine looks like, and I think that's pretty much the sickest part about it. Big claws, yep. And panthers, because pit panthers, and we're pretty great at pit, so they're pretty tough animals. <laughs> Hippos, because they're like the number one killers. Or is it mosquitoes number one killer? Not the point, the hippos are aggressive, right? They kill a lot of people, I think so. This is actually funny because all this year I was called the honey badger. Shout out Bob Widener. He calls me the honey badger and apparently it's the fiercest animal in the animal kingdom. So from my knowledge from him, I think I would be the honey badger. A shark. Well, I just love the water, so I just immediately think of like tough animals in the water, and I just think sharks are really scary. <laughs> a cheetah, because they're out living in the wilderness. They gotta fight to get their food. They're not just giving it like we are every single day. They're super fast, they're tough. They gotta fight for what they want. When I think of like a tough animal, I think someone, I'm gonna have to go with the lion. I'm gonna go with the lion. Um, I think it's just like king of the animal kingdom. I am obsessed with lions. They are such proud animals, they're very strong, and I just love all that they represent. Hofstra pride, I think lions are really tough and they're scary, they have the beautiful mane, but I just also think they just look so strong and um, just so tough. 
Toughest animal. It's got to be a lioness. Yeah, that's probably, that's like my spirit animal. One of my favorite animals. You know, the males they get, they get to lounge around all day, and you know they just wait for the females to come back with with the food. You know, they they do all the hard work. They grind. They work together as a pack, and um, you know the hunting is really never over for them. So yeah, it's got to be the toughest. King of the jungle for a reason, and you really didn't expect Mira Shane the Wolverine to give any love to any badger. Four three, after two quarters. Back with more in a moment. Fun in the sun today with athletes unlimited lacrosse from Maureen Hendricks Field. Team Glenn and Team Arsenal doing battle in the first of two this Saturday afternoon. 4-3 for Team Glenn. Joe Beninati and Courtney Martinez. Connor with you. Court was a five-time national champion at Maryland, so you know all about good defense. Low scoring in that opening half of play. What did you like most about the defensive performance? I like that we're seeing two different styles of defense. Man-to-man -man can be very successful as long as you're moving your feet, working for one another, and sliding early. And then on the flip side, zones create offensive struggle. And that's because you think a player is open on the inside, you make a pass, and it's easily knocked down. So 4-3, halftime score, low scoring, but it's because defense is doing so well. Allie Kennedy is a tough player to defend with her tremendous speed and quickness. As we start the highlights, this is a beautifully demonstrated split dodge. We see as soon as the ball is moved to her, she's creating that opening lane. That's why she started her dodge to the right and then immediately split to the left. And then we see the quick ball movement and cutting. That is creating offensively within that zone defense. And then Kayla Trainer right here reaching around the defensive player. That's great defense. There's nothing you can do there. Just an amazing release. Johansson on the fast break and it pays off. Eyes up, seeing Kenzie Kent, despite the fact that she didn't score a goal, she's getting four points for that assist, and it's all about team play. And then we see the ball movement moving, moving right there at the top. You want to get the ball into a teammate stick who's hot, somebody who has a lane to goal, not keeping it stagnant in any one area. Someone who's hot. I don't know if there's anybody hotter right now than Courtney Fortunato. Izzy McMahon at the eight meter, showing that range power shot. She has the ability to score anywhere from X or up top. The biggest things that you notice right now, looking at the stats, a difference in shots. 20 for Team Glenn to Team Arsenal with nine. Again, the saves, a, a large difference right there. And then turnovers are plaguing Team Arsenal, which is giving more opportunities to Team Glenn. Britt Reed was incredible in that first half. Those 10 saves, that means 60 points for her individually. Remember, the second quarter was tied up at one apiece, so the third quarter will be worth 40 for everybody as we focus more and more. Now, week four on the overall GEICO leaderboard, Dempsey Arsenal not playing today out with an undisclosed medical condition, but still setting the pace. We've seen with Kayla Trainer, who missed last week that missing an entire week doesn't completely knock you off of the leaderboard. She's still in at number 15. I expect her to move up after these weekend's games. But Dempsey Arsenal is certainly going to be missed by her team in the midfield. She does so many of the little things, not just scoring goals, but in addition to winning draw controls and causing turnovers. Dempsey's wearing the shades and the T-shirt. She'd rather be wearing gold today. Get back with her mates for the start of quarter number three, right after this. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports is presented by Geico for bundling made easy. Go to geico.com. A 4-3 count after two quarters. Temps in the mid 80s here at Maureen Hendricks Field. Players having a great day back in the sun after yesterday's thunderstorms derailed the games. 4-3 as we prep for the third quarter today. We are exactly two weeks away from the start of Athletes Unlimited softball. The uh, Season a year ago, champion Kat Osterman. All of us looking forward to a new season in Rosemont as we prepare for season two.
At the start of a journey, it's impossible to know exactly where it will take you, but you can stop for a moment to mark the beginning. going to be great to listen to Eric Collins and Danielle Laurie as they come to you from Parkway Bank Sports Complex. Season two softball, two weeks away, Court. Joe, what I loved is last year during COVID, this was the lone professional sport taking place, but you talked about Kat Osterman, the pitcher. She was the lone champion, but she came out of retirement to play in Athletes Unlimited and then to continue on and win a medal playing with Team USA, pretty amazing. The Olympics, Japan, gold, U.S. silver, Canada, bronze. That definitely opened some eyes, and we look forward to season two with Athletes Unlimited Softball. In half number two, the wonder is, will the goaltending keep up? Britt Reed was incredible, and so was Mira Shane. Mira is about ready to, uh, I would think, give up the crease to her captain, Katie Glenn. Mira Shane, she did a great job stepping in goal, having that start from her team captain. But defensively, I expect for things to step up. Katie Glynn has done an outstanding job of leading her team. She's quiet, but she is a voice on the field. She has her stick strung up in those purple colors. So I expect for this, this to be an added bonus on that defensive end of the field. Playing for the Black Heart Association, Mira Shane played jazz Let's saxophone in third grade, classical piano in kindergarten, and she turns the goal circle over to Katie Glynn. The closer, the captain, the string doctor, you name it. She stops a lacrosse ball extremely well. Talked about the Athletes Unlimited causes. She plays for Friends of Jacqueline. Britt Reed stays put. Reed, why not? After a 10 save half, by far the most saves by any keeper in a first half of play this season. Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor, a shout out of thanks to all the men and women in our crew. Incredible work done by them in the last 24 hours to get our facility, our compound back in working order. Fans are loving Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse this inaugural season. Quarter three starts. Team Arsenal in goal with a ball and Amanda Johansson. Johansson lobs it over the head of Sammy Joe Tracy. That's a turnover. Those are expensive in this league. That's a minus eight for Amanda when you do that. And we had just talked at the half how Team Arsenal and Gold need to limit their turnovers in order to continue to stay close within this game, limit the turnovers while seeing more shots. Taylor Vanthoff walking it ahead. Six on six at this end of the field. There's a 60 second shot clock in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. You see the eight meter key in front of Britt Reed. Score from behind that and you'll get two points for the team, 60 for yourself. Vanthoff bullies her way inside. Ball down, goosed out of there by Kayla Trainer. Shayna Pareka in a foot race and it comes up for Hirsch. Katie Hirsch, AKA RoboCop, has the ball for Team Arsenal. A self-proclaimed gym rat, Katie Hirsch. She loves this sport. She's not afraid to put in the hard work to be one of the best at it. Katie was a former U.S. team player, so strong. And it's tough to beat her defensively with her size, her quickness, and her footwork. Katie Glenn answers her first challenge. Six points per save for the goalies. Kristen Carr brings it ahead. Carr thought she was knighted there a little bit. She scored in week one against Angie Benson. Did the defender number 83. We've seen players get knocked up here and there. I guarantee each and every game there's bumps and bruises again with more contact. More contact, little bumps are gonna happen on the field, but the players do say that they love the quick pace of the game in Athletes Unlimited. It's exciting, they're able to use their speed and athleticism even more than what they have in the past. I go back to media day almost a month ago, Courtney, when they were saying it just, it's on us to adapt. You know, they're professional players. This is the top of the top. They'll adapt, they'll get used to it, and they have, and they've entertained us with terrific games. McMahon drawing a double team. McCone switch it for Johansson. Swinging on around, Kenzie Kent to orchestrate. Kent with a couple of goals in the first quarter on the shovel for Garrett. Shot clock's at 22. 
Behind the goal, McComb. Look inside, Sammy Joe Tracy all alone. She scores. Finding Sammy Joe Tracy on the inside is nothing new. Despite this being an entirely new team, Team Arsenal in gold, Sammy Joe, no matter the team she plays for, this is the fourth different jersey, always getting open. There are 40 points on the line for whichever team wins this third quarter. Sammy Joe Tracy has just given her gang the lead. When Sammy Joe's alone at point blank, you can ring it up. No mistake from there. No chance for Glenn. Back in a moment. Here at Maureen Hendricks Field, Team Arsenal against Team Glenn. Sammy Joe Tracy has just knotted things up as we etched some new names into the book of Unlimited. This book weighs, Courtney, around 25 pounds. It's 500 pages long and opened originally at the opening ceremonies for volleyball, continued through softball, onto lacrosse. The Book of Unlimited marking down a champion next weekend. Just one of the 58 on the roster. How neat the fact that all along with the champion, Every player who completed will be inscribed. It's a tradition that started in the inaugural season of Athletes Unlimited. A history of achievement in Athletes Unlimited stories, the highlights, the events, all featured in that book. Geico leaderboard up to the minute. Kayla Wood will play in the second game today. You can see that on Facebook and YouTube. Katie Glynn is now in cage for her team in purple. So we'll see if Katie can reel in Dempsey Arsenault on top, remember Dempsey is not playing. She's on the sideline as her team's captain, but an undisclosed medical condition is keeping her out. We've seen the entry of Maddie Hall into Athletes Unlimited. Look for her, 57 in the goal. Shot clock reset due to a restraining line foul. Anytime a player steps over that midline, a new 60 is put on for the offensive team. Fake the flip with Kenzie Kent. Move it for McMahon, quickly to McComb. Izzy McMahon tallied on a free position shot earlier in the day. We near the midway mark of the third quarter. Eight minute frames in Athletes Unlimited. McComb turns, fires and scores! A brilliant goal! Tremendous ball movement by Team Arsenal, wearing the gold jerseys. The quick ball movement gets the defense shifting as well as player positions until they find what they're looking for. And that was all Lindsay McCone. As the ball's coming around, she sees that Elaine was cleared off of that cut from her teammate. We see her dropping her stick into a low position as she's coming around, her eyes are up. She fakes the pass. As soon as she gets it low, right there. It's one of the hardest saves to make. Changing of the levels when it's high to high, easier for a goalie. But that's why we saw the goalkeeper, Katie Glynn, drop her stick. She thought she was going to shoot low before she snapped it high. Once Katie Glynn, the goalie, gets parallel with her cross, there's no way for her to get back up. And that's what the, the change of angles does. The wrist strength from a cone, fabulous as uh, she has scored in each of her last four games. The last three goals on the board for Team Arsenal. It's the first time they've led today, and they lead this all-important third quarter. 40 points are on the line in this third quarter since the second quarter was tied up at one apiece. Amanda Johansson waiting for McCone to sub out. As they move the ball back and forth, maintaining possession, they can take their entire time. Use the 60 seconds, they're winning this quarter to nothing, which means they're also winning those second quarter points to date, which are worth 40 points. Circle it on up, bring it up top to Garrett, and then for Kenzie Ken, who usually does her best work behind the cage, now outside the eight meter key. McCone will play catch with McMahon. Bring it on around with 15 seconds on the shot clock right now. Johansson directing traffic against Gabriel. Lindsey McCone looking for a passing lane. McCone's seven seconds to shoot. Feed it inside for Sammy Joe. That gets away. It's a turnover. Back to Team Glynn. 
A chance for them to tie or perhaps take the lead should they score from behind that eight meter key. And remember, they have the league's leader in two point goals in Shayna Pareka, 41 in purple. Now there's plenty of time. I don't think they're at that point right now. However, she does have a knack for scoring two pointers. She leads the league at this point. She has that ability. Fortunato thinking two, that was blocked by Garrett. Halfway through the 60 second shot clock. Happy to see the return of Kayla Trainer, who goes to work quickly, turns and scores. Kayla Trainer, who missed last week tending to a personal family matter, has been jazzed up to play today. Anytime there's a lane to goal, Kayla Trainer is going to take it. She can beat that 1v1 matchup every time. And we see she's adjusted her shot a bit. She's had a bunch of lanes within the first half, but wasn't able to convert them into goals. As soon as her teammate took that defensive player away, that's what opened the lane. We saw Courtney Fortunato wearing number 15 cut through. She's occupying her defender, which allows Kayla more time to come up and around that goal cage. And again, what she's able to do with her stick at all levels, pretty amazing. I know Wakefield doesn't mind that one-on-one -on -one matchup. She, she would relish the chance to try and stop Kayla, but who calls for help? Is it the goalie or is it an adjacent defender who, who sees when it's time to go? It's the defender on ball as well as the goalie. Trust me, they're all communicating in that instance to send. You want to send an immediate slide when Kayla has the ball. She's just that forceful. She's just that good working from behind the cage to top side. Ball scraped down, taken off the uh, Kentucky Bluegrass by Kenzie Kent in a 5-5 game. Yesterday's doubleheader postponed due to a a huge thunderstorm, a derecho that came blistering through Maureen Hendricks Field right around just an hour or so before game time. Knocked our TV compound to the ground practically. Fabulous work though done by all involved to get us on the air, and get the players back on the field in a 5-5 game. McMahon stopped there by Glenn. Rebound, played to safety. Well done by Mary Kate Banani. 39 in purple was there to rebound. Banani, Little, Carr, and Geiger defensively dressed in purple. Wakefield, Walfer, Hirsch, and McKenzie. Good to see Tiana Walfer back, number three in the gold after missing a couple of weeks due to injury. 1.45 to play in the third quarter. Taylor Vanthoff sent it wide. In this 5-5 score, there's a timeout on the field. Folks, you can join us at Maureen Hendricks Field at the Maryland Soccerplex on some game days. Tickets available for select dates. There's one more of these to come next weekend. AUProsports.com slash tickets slash lacrosse. Fans are in attendance today, friends, family, special guests, all uh, partaking in this uh, Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse season. We thank our presenting field partners, all the good folks at Geico for their support. If you are just tuning in, Joe Beninati, Courtney Martinez, Connor with you. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports, presented by Geico for bundling made easy. Go to geico.com. The score at the half was 4-3. We are 5-5 five, five right now. We see Amanda Johansson checking out her hands. Have a peek, Court. There was space right here for Taylor Van Toff. That's why she took the shot. She didn't quite reach around that defensive player enough. Looks like Amanda Johansson may have taken it on the hand. It's a little bit difficult to tell as we see it again from this angle. Oh, struggled to see through that ref right there with my x-ray vision. but. At, nonetheless, these players are tough. I, I doubt that they're feigning anything. When you hit a defensive player from the knees up with a ball, that's considered an immediate red card. Now, that was just a stick follow through. So if she did hit Amanda Johansson, stick follow through, that would be a dangerous shot, or dangerous follow through, excuse me, and that would be just a yellow card for Taylor Van Toff. But the referees didn't see it. You know, it was hard to see on that replay. So that's a no call. But anytime you give space to an offensive player, they're going to look to take the shot. They have the range from far out. 
We have seen a number of players be hit with yellow cards for the dangerous follow through. 5 5 in this one. Our next game, just a heads up for those of you watching on FS1, our next game is scheduled to go 2 15 p.m. Eastern Time on the digital platforms. Check us out on Facebook and YouTube. That'll be Kayla Wood's squad against Taylor Cummings. As far as the players in this contest are concerned, there are five players in the top 11 on the overall leaderboard trying to reel in Dempsey Arsenault, who has been stuck on 1133 since she is not playing today nor this weekend. Every single one of those players after this third quarter, depending upon which team you're on, it's going to be a major boost because the second quarter was a tie. So that means those points bump over to the third quarter, and that means a lot. So even though it's tied at this point in the game, Team Arsenal is winning this third quarter two to one. Kayla Trainer spins, turns, and fires. That was stopped by Britt Reed. Mark her down for another stop. This is professional lacrosse. The players are receiving base pay, win bonuses, leaderboard bonuses, all to be sorted out by next weekend when we crown one individual champion of the 58 players on the roster. Wakefield getting right into Trainer. Right in there at the hands, Kayla. A busy bee with a fresh 60 second shot clock. Trainer working around the screen set by O'Donnell. Kayla Trainer draws the double team, fakes the one handed flip, and then we hear the whistle. Kayla was looking for that call to be made. She was waiting for bigger lanes to be cleared. That was tremendous help by the defense, making sure she wasn't able to, to take a shot from the outside, but earning the eight meter, this is huge. Free position, will she crank it up for two? Kayla Trainer inside the arc, fires and scores! A bullet from inside the eight meter key. Trainer has the hat trick. Team Glynn grabs a lead back. Kayla has the ability to score from the outside. She's such a strong shooter. Again, that little wind up took a step to the inside, but Despite the fact that these players are making eight meters look easy, it's not. That's a lot of power that you have to generate from your stick in order to get it number one on cage and number two well placed. You've told me time after time after time she's not a natural lefty. I watch her work so beautifully left handed, but when it came time to the power shot, she took it righty. So I believe you now. <laughs> Thanks. And so does Britt Reed. As that ball ricochets out of the meshing and Kayla Trainer gets her third on the day. For every goal she scores, she gets 12 points on the leaderboard totals, and she is climbing, and climbing fast. There is the ability to challenge in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, and we see the officials, led by head official today, Liz Brush, at the timekeeper's table, looking at a tablet at that last trainer bid. So the challenges by Team Arsenal Gold, what they're challenging, at this point you can challenge anything having to do with a goal, whether it's a two-pointer, whether it's not, there's a dangerous follow-through. So as we re-watch this again, each team only has two challenges per game. You can take them at any point. As we watch Kayla winding up. The shot is fine, Court. She didn't leave early or anything like that. I'm, the question is whether or not she was fouled in an area that was deserving of awarding a, a free position. Challenge was where the, the spot of the foul for the last free position, and it was inside the eight meter. Joe, there you go. The goal stands, the foul, anywhere inside of the eight meter. Again, very different than what the general lacrosse fan is used to. NCAA rules, there's a lot more hashes on the field. There's one eight meter key, and there's one spot to take an eight meter from. So if you get fouled inside of the critical scoring area, she's on the inside right now, and we see that stick up by the head. She's in the eight meter key. There's no question about that. That's why we saw her turn and look for that call to be made right here. She's inside. That stick is by the neck. There's no question. 
see the official wearing number one, looking right at Kayla. Kayla protesting, and just as the foul was made inside the key, the free position shot was awarded. Trainer buried it. She has three goals on the day. It's 6-5 now with 60 seconds to go. The score in the third quarter alone is 2-2. There are 40 points on the line in this third quarter, and should it remain tied, all of that carries over to a decisive fourth quarter. To the draw we go. McCone and Taylor Vantha. And it's McCone who gets the draw controlled. You'll give her two points for that. She was then fouled by Taylor Vantha. Possession for Team Arsenal in the gold jerseys. Shot clock's turned off. Kenzie Kent will operate six on six. The largest lead of the day has been just two points. And it was for Team Glynn after Fortunato struck early in the second frame. 30 seconds left. They're playing to decide this third quarter, perhaps, with 40 points on the line. McCone drifting away. Banani was looking after her. On the split dodge, Garrett. Find Kenzie Kent on the hop against Little. Kenzie Kent leads the league in assists. Johansson finds McMahon. Johansson from the top. Down to five seconds left. Bad angle. Kent fires from deep. That's no trouble. Katie Glenn with the easy stop. And we are through three quarters. The third quarter, Courtney, just like the second, is a carryover. The final quarter is worth 60. With the final quarter worth 60, you know, I expected that third quarter, more points to be scored. We did see a lot. It was two to two, just as many almost as that first quarter. So defense is going to tighten things up, but I expect attackers to start, start shooting that ball more frequently, looking for lanes maybe not as big as what they were looking for in the past because they just want to put points on the board. Two teams taking over this town. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse on Fox Sports is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Week four of Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse, just about a month ago was media day. We learned about uh, all of these great players and their personalities, special skills that they had, like Hallie Majorana, who was just juggling like over and over and over just to show off, basically. We are watching Arsenault and Glenn today and court after team Glenn took the 3-2 lead in the first eight minutes It's been locked up since this fourth quarter is huge. It's worth 60 now Worth 60 points, but then ultimately who's ever winning that fourth quarter is going to most likely then win the game So 60 plus the 45 game that's 105 points. That's huge in terms of bumping up in the leaderboard Kayla trainer continues to be a human highlight reel Kayla Trainer, she's been a student of the game ever since her days at Syracuse. Obviously, they continued on with Team USA, but her ability to score from anywhere on the field, especially with great defense on her, it's unmarked. She's able to move her stick around that defensive player, never making contact with them. I can't tell you how hard that is to do. And then she shows her range with her ability to shoot a power shot from the eight meter line. She has three goals today. She has four hat tricks in Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. She's got a pair of four goal games on her ledger, and you can see she's picked up just 46 points alone today. Before we start the fourth quarter, we invite you to head to AUProSports.com. Get your Athletes Unlimited gear right there. And don't forget to follow on social at AUProSports for exclusive inside content. Temperatures in the mid 80s, it's humid. 
The lights have been on all day here at Maureen Hendricks Field. It's a, a day when fans have been welcomed to the stands. Getting an eye full of Arsenal and Glenn. Wood and Cummings to follow. Just a reminder, not the normal hour bridge between games. Yes, Miris, you can dance to it. At 2.15 p.m. Eastern on uh, Facebook Live and YouTube. We'll be coming to you. Britt Brown chatting on the sidelines. Injured Hallie Majorana and Dempsey Arsenal getting some sun. Dempsey to the left there in the sunglasses. Out of the lineup this weekend due to an undisclosed medical condition. We've welcomed Maddie Hall to Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse. She a former Florida Gator, two-year starter there, wearing 57. Fourth quarter with Kenzie Kent getting the first touch offensively. Amanda Johansson missed the first couple of weeks due to an ankle injury. Doesn't look like she's suffering at all from that. She's been very effective. Sammy Joe Tracy on the exchange with McMahon. At the eight meter key, you score from behind that arc, they'll give you two points. You'll get 16 individually. Little hoping for a cause turnover. When you do that, it's as good as scoring a goal for a defender. Kent feeds, Tracy bluffs it off the hitch. She did not shoot. Shot clock is at 18. Inside, Johansson's quick stick. She pumped that wide. Closest to the ball when it leaves the field, where and when, gets possession, so it stays with the team in gold. McMahon fires, and Glynn, she has been strong since coming on for Mira Shane. The goaltending today has been excellent. Glynn has four stops. She gets six points for every one of those. And remember, at the other end, Britt Reed is right around a dozen for her total. Oftentimes we forget these goalies are making saves against the best of the best. Right on the doorstep, she's holding her position high. Her stick is there. She's seeing the ball the entire way. Again, incredibly difficult because these aren't just any shooters. Katie Glenn started the week. Number four on the leaderboard. Gabriel gets inside. She scores. Grace Gabriel to pay dirt. So I talked about Team Arsenal's man defense throughout the entire game. They've been so stellar. There haven't been tremendous swings, but we see right here Grace Gabriel wearing number 48 as she's dodging a swing, a swing. Anytime you see swings coming at you, you continue to go through it because nobody was putting a body on her. And if you don't put a body on an attacking player, she's gonna have room to run. So great job setting herself up right here, running through the stick swinging, protecting it with her body, and ultimately finishing. Every goal scored today by the team in purple has been unassisted, including this strike from Grace Gabriel. Very deceptive, her speed and power. She gets across, works laterally, and separates from defenders. And once she's there, she knows how to put it away. She has uh, goals in three of her last five. She's been playing since the seventh grade, she tells us. Arsenal in the gold jerseys. The last six possessions off the draw have been to McCone. That trend continues. McCone comes up with another. Kenzie Kent finds it off the turf. Ideally, you want to make sure that you're translating those draw controls, those possessions into goals, and that's what's plagued Team Arsenal thus far, turning the ball over or saves that are happening in goal by Katie Glenn, making it difficult for them to score. Garrett on the feed for Sammy Joe Tracy. She bluffs the two-point shot. Johansson against Taylor Vanthoff. Vanthoff makes the stick check, puts the ball down. Out of the pack comes Grace Gabriel. She was fouled, held there by Sammy Joe Tracy. It's a 7-5 lead for the team in purple. And Katrina Geiger will advance. Geiger, who played in a previous pro league, the WPLL with the Philadelphia Fire. Geiger closing in. 
Yields the ball to Shayna Pareka. Her sister Sydney will be playing in the second game. Just a reminder that comes your way at 2.15 Eastern. Quick turnaround. We'll get everybody buttoned back up and right back in business. Trainer works in against Wakefield. That's been the marquee matchup. Sneak attempt, score! Fortunato, short side. Joe, again, when you set up Kayla Trainer in any isolation situation, the defense is gonna take notice, but then that opens up opportunities for other players, and that's what happened there for Courtney Fortunato. Largest lead on the day for Team Glenn. Trainer sharing the ball. Fortunato knows what to do with it when she's there. Hugs all around. Britt Reed and her mates find themselves down by three, but Britt has had a strong performance today, and she's helped with the Geico defensive plays of the game. Britt Reed with the Geico defensive play of the game. She is so tough in the cage. I guarantee that this score would be a lot bigger than what it is right now if she was not in the cage. We see her taking up as much of the frame as she can, and that's against largely what I would consider one of the best players in the world, Kayla Trainer, able to save in tight as well as shots from downtown. She's really seeing that ball. At the end of the season, we will be awarding the Geico Defensive Player of the Year. This Athletes Unlimited Award comes with an added $5,000 bonus for the winner. Dozen stops for Britt. You mentioned Kayla Trainer. It can't be any fun to try and stop her one-on-one, -on -one, nor Courtney Fortunato, for that matter. Fortunato, just a few moments ago, lifting uh, the team in purple to its largest lead on the day. So initially, Kayla Trainer was set up with an isolation play right here. So look at all those defensive players in the middle looking at her. All eyes are on her. That creates an opportunity for a teammate to cut, and that was Courtney Fortunato benefiting from all defensive players looking at Kayla Trainer, able to come around that crease nice and quickly, but she was smart to come around the side where the defenders were not looking to. So it's all about what opportunities you, what you have when your teammate is being sent with a double and triple team. Four unanswered goals for Team Glynn. Fortunato's point breakdown on the screen. She has tallies in nine of the 10 games she's played in in this Athletes Unlimited season. Back to Kayla Trainer for a second. As Trainer tries to win the draw, what else does she do on the field? It's amazing. How has her game changed since Syracuse? You know, I'd say she's gotten even smarter if that's possible. She's always had the ability to score from low angles, creating. They always wanted the ball in her stick. That hasn't changed even for Team USA. But I think as you mature in age, you know, generally you're just not as fast as when you were younger, but she has the ability with her stick to make amazing things happen. So it hasn't changed largely. I, I think she's just smarter if that's possible. This fourth quarter is worth 60 points for the team that wins this individual frame. There's a whistle with a player down and ailing. Molly Garrett bouncing back up, shaking it off. It was 3-2 Arson, or rather 3-2 Glynn after one. The two teams tied both the second and third quarters. So the fourth carries over for 60, plus the 45 if you win the game. In this quarter alone, 2-0 for Team Glynn. Goals from Gabriel and Fortunato. O'Donnell will swing it on around. Nearing the halfway mark of the fourth. Allie Kennedy started the scoring a long time ago. Kennedy sprinting to find Pereka for two. Stabbed again by Britt Reed. Reed on the clear. Johansson will distribute. Amber McKenzie brings it along. McKenzie, the 
mom to her two boys, Storm and Bolt. She calls Bolt the wild child. Look out. Well, with a name like that, you kind of have to be, right? I would think so. You better be fast, too, <laughs> eventually. As in Usain Bolt. Lightning Bolt also applies. Inside look, Sammy Joe Tracy, crossbar! Did not click there. New 60 second shot clock. Set it up for Kenzie Kent. Pushed back behind the cage. McCone looking it over. There's Sammy Joe Tracy, doubled quickly. Spins out of trouble and fired that one wide. On the backup, the ball belongs to Katie Glynn. Good hustle by the keeper. She was closest to the ball where and when it left the field on a shot. Geiger, who played collegiately at Loyola, two-time All-Patriot League performer, picked up an assist on a goal by against Team Wood last week. Fortunato drifting in. Lying in the weeds there was Trainer. And shield direct traffic. Two minutes and 38 seconds to go. 30 seconds in the shot clock. Trainer off the split dodge, well defended by McKenzie. This ball gets away from Fortunato. A bad time for a turnover. There aren't really any good times for them, but now with Arsenal in the goal, trailing by three, this becomes a very valuable possession. Dempsey Arsenal not playing today out with an undisclosed medical condition. Her understudy there had the ball. Hall, bounce shot, score! On the run, Johansson brings him within two. Team Arsenal, definite use of the slow break right here. Not often do we see trail cutters coming in wide open, but Team Arsenal and Gold able to, to capture that slow break, wide open player coming in. Amanda Johansson, she has great height, great size. So she's a good target on the inside. We see her calling for that ball with her stick up. At the very top, defensive player wasn't sure which one to take. And Sammy Joe Tracy, she's the one who had the eyes seeing that player coming wide open. When defense isn't set and ready, that's when you can capitalize on slow breaks. Just enough room there for the push-pull, the delivery of the shot from Johansson. You'll see it here. Amanda, who helped to Southern Cal, USC, to its first ever NCAA tourney appearance while she was a, a member of the women of Troy. Two times a captain there. She's not the captain this week, Dempsey Arsenal is, but right now, she and her mates are in a two-point game with plenty of time to go. The fourth quarter scoring summary is 2-1 in favor of Team Glynn. The overall game, 8-6 in favor of the players in purple. Majorana and Arsenal there in the T-shirts, the Love is Unlimited T-shirts. We celebrate Pride Week. They wish they were in the action. Athletes Unlimited Lacrosse is game within the game. Bottom of the screen, Katie Glynn narrowing the margin on Dempsey Arsenal. The goalie is now second best overall. Joe and I expect this to change after the fourth quarter. It's worth 60 points. And again, unless it ends the game in a tie, which could happen, they could also get 45 points for a win. So that's gonna bump any one team or player up in the leaderboard. Courtney, you factor in Kaylee Waters. There are three goalies in the top six. Pretty amazing. And we'll be seeing Waters in the second game, scheduled to start at 2.15 Eastern. You'll see it uh, on the um, Facebook and YouTube. Speaking of Taylor Cummings, first time a captain, and she is a devastating and explosive offensive performer. She is a threat all over the field. We saw her with that cut right there, but she is a dodger through and through. She can slice and dice through any defense. She really gets a head full of steam, but it's her ability on defense as well. She causes turnovers. She wins draw controls. She is literally all over the stat board. Great to have you on Fox Sports, presented by Geico for bundling made easy. Go to geico.com. At 2.15, we switch over to Facebook and YouTube for that second game of two today trying to beat potentially another rainstorm that could be in the area. Yesterday's games postponed due to the thunderstorm that gets the fancy name Derecho. No, it had a name yesterday? I think they might have been calling that one a Derecho. By the, by the video you were taking from the car while you were looking for safety, that was a Derecho. <laughs> 
And by the fact that our tents were flying all around like Auntie M was in the vicinity, thank goodness it wasn't more. There are a number of trees, though, down around the grounds here. This is a huge complex, the Maryland Soccerplex. On the roll, Dodge, shovel back. Sammy Joe Tracy will hitch against Carr. Looks to McMahon, drive, stopped by Glynn. Rebound belongs to Allie Kennedy. Geiger just waltzing and weaving her way ahead. Geiger with those long strides going to the cooker here. Kicked out. A kick saved by Britt Reed. Another stop. She's got a baker's dozen at least. Johansson got hit on that hand again. Floats it over, turns it over though. Little takes it back. So let's set it up for you. 117 left. A whistle, a horn blaring out. An 8 6 lead at the moment for the team in purple. That was a lot of change of possessions back and forth. Talked about how many shots I predicted were going to be taken in that fourth quarter. Each of the teams wanting to walk away with that fourth quarter win, which are worth 60 points. However, the goalkeepers are coming up with big saves. Big saves, a lot of turnovers. That's what's keeping things close and exciting. We just saw both facilitators on the field. Facilitators are like assistant coaches, helpers, advisors. Shanta Lecker is the uh, facilitator for Team Arsenal today. There she is in the white t-shirt back to you. And the facilitator for Team Glynn is Julie Despacito. There's Julie holding the tablet in the white uh, t-shirt there around the Team Glynn huddle. One minute, 16 seconds away. It is a two-point game. Next weekend, we crown one individual champion. We give out four medalists, four medals. Look at those medals. They're designed and produced for Athletes Unlimited by Max Lane. Previously, they've been silver, all of them. However, one difference in lacrosse, for the first time, it's a gold medal will be given to the champion. You see Athletes Unlimited's vision mentioned on those medals, the missions, the values, excellence, community, leadership. The GEICO leaderboard up to the moment. MC Arsenal not playing this weekend. Katie Glenn, you just saw her numbers change up to uh, 1,110 points. There are one, two, three, there are three goalies in the top six with uh, Glenn, Waters, and Reed. Waters in the game to come. She'll be playing for Team Taylor Cummings. Courtney Fortunato among the top eight. What and I... huge point totals now <laughs> yeah. in the fourth, right? Court, there are 60 points on the line plus the overall win points. People are going to be moving all over this after this fourth quarter. But what I love and what the players love about Athletes Unlimited, when you look at the leaderboard, it's not just the offensive players who are getting points because they're producing. It's individually getting caused turnovers on the defense, saves as a goalie, but everything matters. That team play still matters because of wins. The game is not done. This game is not over. Sammy Joe Tracy knows that as she talks to McMahon. But if it stands like this, the team in purple would each get 105 points right off the bat once the final horn sounds. Then you wait for the MVP voting. Kennedy runs towards that eight meter key. Keeps it away for Shayna Pereka. O'Donnell running, trying to rag time now. Shaded by the defensive work of Maddie Hall. This is her first game. Good pass inside, Vanthoff puts it away. Taylor Vanthoff. Excellent use of the shot clock by Team Glenn. Is the ball is in their stick, the other team can't score, which that's what needs to happen. As a former coach, though, you must be telling the, your players, you do not shoot unless it's an automatic goal, right? A absolutely. So we saw that first possible opportunity, and they didn't take the shot. However, this one, a wide open player on the inside. As soon as she saw the goalie bite, Britt Reed taking that bite right there on her fake, it was wide open net behind her. So I, I wouldn't fault Taylor Vantoff, but you better finish. My point being, if you hit the post there, oh my goodness, and Arsenal gets the ball, they had the chance with a two in this league to tie. Now that great little hesitation that we just saw, the slight little hitch, the fake down low, we see in close right here, boom. And then she was able to shoot around. As soon as she got the goalkeeper to jump, 
the whole net was in front of her. So it was a great, smart finish, much better than that first look that I thought they were going to take that initial shot, but waste a little, little bit more time, which is what they need before extending the lead by three. Taylor Vanthoff running back to get into uh, position for this draw. The lead is three points. That equals the largest for Team Glenn today. Just 49 seconds left. McCone in gold there, 46, just about has to have this draw possession. She had a chance there, went off the top of her cross. The ricochet bounces towards the restraining box. Still fighting for it, and O'Donnell comes up with it. That should do it for Team Glenn. They lead in the fourth quarter, that's worth 60. They lead in the game, that's worth another 45. It's about to be a huge bonus for the team in purple. Fortunato getting away from McKenzie. Team Arsenal trying to double everywhere. Kennedy on the ball movement, 13 seconds left. Taylor Vanthoff, who scored the insurance goal a few moments ago. Kennedy peels out. There's no reason for Kayla Trainer to go to the cage. This game will go in the books. A 9-6 win for Team Glynn. And with all those carryover points, 105 points just went to everybody wearing purple. Tremendous use of the shot clock. Game management through that final fourth quarter for Team Glynn. They were able to come away with three goals despite Arsenal leading in the draw control category. But they were able to finish their opportunities and that's what it comes down to. However many opportunities you have, who is able to finish them at the end of the day. And Team Glynn tightened up their shooting, especially Kate, Kayla Trainer did a great job of her adjustments at the second half. A victorious side, both sides of the equation, Amber McKenzie and Kenzie Kent striding off along with Molly Garrett and Maddie Hall as Team Arsenal falls. Kayla Trainer returning to active duty today and wasted no time getting on the score sheet. You know, when Kayla missed last week, you knew she was gonna come back on fire. She shows her range and her abilities, being able to attack, attack from different areas, so key. You cannot leave her without a quick slide because she is going to make the defense pay, which she certainly did here. And she's not just tremendous with her right hand, but her left is equally as good. Getting adjusted to her new mate. She was directing traffic throughout the day and successfully so. Kayla Trainer, kind enough to spend some time with us in the aftermath of this victory. Kayla, what was the difference in the second half today? How did you guys pick up that win? Um, yeah, I mean, I think Britt Reed had an amazing day today in goal, and she had 10 shots in the first half, or 10 saves, excuse me, in the first half. And um, we sort of were just figuring it out a little bit, and then we put a couple away that we needed to, and we had good looks in the first half, but she just played great. So the second half, we put it together and put some in the back of the net. Kayla, when you look at the defense that you guys were up against, what made it so difficult in the first half? Yeah, I mean, they played tremendous defense in the first half. Um, like I said, Britt Reed was unbelievable in the cage. We had 20 shots, she had 10 saves. Um, and then in general, just all, all three of their defenders on the field today were unbelievable and they played great in the first half, especially. Kayla, we had a number of chances to isolate on you when you attack from below goal line to get top side. What's your secret there? Why are you able to perform so well when it looks like you have no angle to shoot? Um, yeah, I like the ball directly behind the goal just because I like to go both hands and sort of whatever way the defense overplays me or gives up something little, I try to take that side whatever way it is, left or right. That's why I like to go at X because then I have both choices. Kayla, we appreciate the insight. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Kayla Trainer and Team Glynn victorious today. They pick up a three-point decision. The players grab those tablets and they weigh in with their MVP voting. There are three players who receive MVP votes. If you're voted MVP one, it's worth 45, 30 for second, 15 for, fifth, for third, as they share a good-natured laugh on the Team Glynn side, a 9-6 winner. I th I think both of these goalkeepers have an opportunity to be a part of that MVP talk. 
Obviously, I think Kayla Trainer as well, but ultimately it's in the hands of the players as well as those in the Athletes Unlimited Club. So we're waiting for the tabulations to add up. Trust me, Katie Glynn has passed Dempsey Arsenal on the overall leaderboard because of what happened in that fourth quarter and with the win. Katie O'Donnell there center screen making her MVP vote as the Geico leaderboard will update more and more. We get set for our second game at uh, 215 today. For Courtney Martinez Connor for all the men and women in our crew. Joe Beninati thanks so much for your time. Team Glenn a big winner today a winner by three as we remind you 215 p.m. coming up for our second game on Facebook. And YouTube. Taylor Vanthoff seals the deal.